together for over 400 videos and I thought it was high time that I shared my go-to chocolate mud cake recipe with you guys. Not only is this cake just delicious to eat, and of course I'm gonna show you how to decorate it so that it looks amazing just as is, but this is my go-to recipe whenever I wanna make a stacked or tiered cake, as well as a three-dimensional carved novelty cake. It's really nice and dense, so it can bear a lot of weight, and it's really, really stable, but it's also sort of light and moist enough that it's just delicious to eat. Your recipe for this, as well as your method, and a white chocolate version of this mud cake, I'm gonna leave on the My Cupcake Addiction website. To make your mud cakes, you're going to need a combination of plain or all-purpose flour and some self-raising flour. I've got a little bit of bicarb soda or baking soda, and you're also going to need some eggs at room temperature. I've got a little bit of instant coffee. Now, this is not going to add any sort of a coffee flavor to your cake. It just makes the chocolate flavor richer. I've got some good quality dark chocolate, some oil, some unsweetened cocoa, and I've got some butter. You're going to need some buttermilk here, so if you don't have actual buttermilk, you can make your own by squeezing a little bit of lemon into regular milk and letting it sit for 10 minutes. And I've also got some sugar. You'll need a large bowl for mixing, you'll need a saucepan because we've got a bit of heating to do, and I've also got a greased and lined baking tin. So this is enough to make you either a 9 inch round or an 8 inch square mud cake. We're going to get the hot parts out of the way first, so you want to take your butter, your water and your coffee and add it all into a saucepan. You want to heat that over medium heat until it just starts to boil because that's how you know it's hot enough and also that all of your ingredients are combined and then you can pour in your chocolate. Stir that around till it's totally melted and you've got no lumps and bumps and then just pop that mixture off to the side to cool slightly. While that one's cooling down we can get our dry ingredients together so I'm just going to use a sifter because I haven't pre-sifted my flour and I'm going to sift both of those flours together. I'm also going to add in the unsweetened cocoa and the bicarb soda or the baking soda. Sift those ones all through, make sure they're all nicely mixed together, and then you want to create a well in the centre just using a wooden spoon. Lightly whisk your eggs together just using a fork, and then you want to add those into the well in your mixture, and then you can add in your oil. Now your buttermilk, if you've made it yourself, should look like this, so it's starting to go kind of a little bit chunky. You can add that in as well. I always home make my own buttermilk because I can never be bothered keeping actual buttermilk on hand. Using a wooden spoon, you just want to mix through that mixture until you've got no lumps and bumps, and that well in the centre just helps us do that. And then you can pour that delicious, runny, gooey, chocolatey mixture into a lined, greased baking tray. Take it up to about two thirds or three quarters full. Now, because I'm using a springform tin, which has one of those removable bases, it can sometimes leak a little bit out the edges, so I always stick mine on a lined baking tray. You want to cook that kind of low and slow, so I'm going to leave your temperatures and conversions and such below because it's different in different countries, but I've baked three here to show you the differences. This one is an 8 inch round, you can see how high that mixture's gone. The one in the middle is a 9 inch round, so it's a little bit lower on the sides, and the one at the very end is a 6 inch. You can see with the 6 inch, just to show you some options, I've also lined the side of the tin with baking paper. You can lift that off and you can see how beautifully and evenly that 6 inch has risen, and it also gives you a little bit more height to your baking tins if you wanted to bake like a 4 inch high layer. You're going to get one 6 inch and about 8 cupcakes out of this mix. Now for the fun part, so to decorate I've just got some Kit Kat blocks, some sprinkles, a little bit of chocolate ganache, I will leave the recipe for that down below, some melted chocolate and some fresh strawberries. This is simple, it's easy and it's a great way to make one of those mud cakes the perfect birthday cake. First up you want to take your strawberries and I'm just grabbing the little hull at the top, dipping the last two thirds of those into that chocolate and then I'm going to place them on a tray lined with some baking paper and let them set. I never like to have just plain chocolate, so I like to have a mixture between some sprinkles, some plain chocolate, and then I'll also grab a little bit more of that chocolate, pop it into a Ziploc bag and snip off a very, very fine little tip, and use that to kind of line across in one fluid movement, whole lines of those strawberries at once. The faster you do this, the neater it is, believe it or not, the slower you go, the more you'll have little bumps and wobbles. Let all of those strawberries set and then you want to chop your Kit Kat blocks. Now make sure these are at room temperature for easy chopping. They're not refrigerated or they're going to start to crack and break. Always chop them and don't try to just break them by hand or else you won't get that nice neat edge. I'm going to chop those into twos and then I'm going to take a little bit of that ganache and just spread it onto a cake board or a cake plate. And then I'm going to pour that ganache straight over the top of the cake. Don't go too crazy here because you don't really want it spilling out the sides too much underneath those Kit Kats. So kind of pour it over and then spread it out with that spatula so it's kind of going down to the sides but not oozing out on the bottoms of the plate. 
If you need to, just use a napkin or a paper towel just to sort of tidy up the edges so that your chocolate ganache is nice and neat and your cake board's pretty clean. Take your Kit Kats now and stick them two at a time all the way around the outside edges and you might need to trim the very, very last one just to make him fit in your last gap. I recommend eating any leftovers, but you guys can do whatever you like with them. And to hold all of those nicely in place and cover up that little break line on the Kit Kat blocks, I always like to just ring mine with a little bit of ribbon. I'm going with red to match the strawberries today. Tie it in a beautiful bow, trim off the edges, and it's as simple as stacking your strawberries. Now I'm starting with some non chalk dip strawberries that I have cut the little greenery bits off just to build it up a little bit because you really want a nice luxurious pile of strawberries. And then I'm going to add on alternating the little stripy ones, the little sprinkled ones, and just the plain ones. That's your ultimate mud cake ready to go. And I kind of like to think this one doubles as my serving of fruit for the day. Once again, I'm going to leave that whole recipe and the white chocolate version of this on the My Cupcake Addiction website. If you're not already subscribed to the My Cupcake Addiction channel, make sure you do for two new videos every week and as always guys thanks very much for watching hey guys it's elise and welcome